maybe they're trying to form their own, you know, organization that way. Maybe they got permission to change their name to Killer Instinct, but they're still part of the Revenant's community, you know, as a Revenant sponsored team. Definitely very curious to see, but we're going to see Miles of Harpy in the first band right now. That more or less is a target ban, probably against mid Chad. Miles of Harpy, while pretty okay, I think, in the game, not one of those high priority picks. Definitely something that is not as scary or threatening as other stuff in the game at the current moment. But the card this will be banned out. That is one of the other one of the things that is a little more scary than a Malzahar. But Galio is also going to be banned out by the side of Killer Instinct. Um, as you see here, Killer Instinct is on the blue side for this first match. Shaco getting banned out. That's quite interesting. Obelisk being a uh, avid Shaco player is not even going to be able to get the chance to shine on that champion whatsoever. Let's see how the final ban goes for Rev, uh, excuse me, Killer Instinct. Even I still want to call him Revenant's Black. They'll always be Revenant's Black in my heart. The Relia being the last ban for that side. It really did get nerfed. Not quite as a dominating champion as it was before. Still very, very strong. Still has a place in the game. But it's not a must pick, must ban at the current moment. And then we see Aatrox is the final ban. But Caitlyn will be picked up first for Cindere. So, kind of interesting to first pick the Caitlyn. Uh, definitely kind of one of the safer uh, bot lane picks, though. You have a you have extra range. You do have the net to get away. The traps can definitely stop the pursuit. Definitely not the worst first pick you can get in the game by far. Uh, then we're going to see the Scion. He picked up for Yogurt Fan. In that top lane. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how they decided. Excuse me, how did they decide to counter maybe this Caitlyn pickup? The Ramus probably would be pretty good for that. Um, just looking at only the Caitlyn at the moment. Obviously, uh, the Ramus does have the natural thorn mail. No, but they switched to Elise at the like last second. I think Elise is a pretty okay champion right now. Definitely not the best you could think of for the jungle situation. Uh, I'm not the worst though. Has okay CC. Does have still has pretty okay damage. Uh, the bigger problem is, is being able to get in there and actually deal that damage uh, with the way the a lot with the way the game is and how like how many champions have hard CC. It's harder for champions like Elise or you know Master Yi and whatnot to just get in there and do tons of damage without being focus that easily or focus super hard uh in a, especially in a constructed team environment with the uh, you know clear communication between all members of that team you know it makes things a lot more difficult so the elise pickup while i don't think it's the worst thing in the world definitely could be a little bit better but that's just my opinion. We do see Cassiopeia being picked up, and then Thresh will be picked up for Killer Instinct on that side. So their entire bot lane is bought out. Lissandra going to be banned out. Braum going to be banned out. I do like the Lissandra ban. It definitely has seen a lot, a lot of play. It's a very strong champion. Since it's got the passive change to have the thralls, it's an even, even stronger champion. So it does not surprise me. And now we're going to see the Ari be banned out as well. So Babylon. Not gonna have a couple champions to his liking, and then the Morgana getting banned out. So it does look like they're not afraid of Nofu at all right now. The they're more worried about controlling Grudon. Now it could be because Grudon is more of a threat and has better has had a better showing, or Grudon is their weakest you know weakest player, so they're gonna limit his pull as much as possible to make him super uncomfortable and have an even harder time you know in that support role. But we will see the Ezreal pick up. Ezreal, one of the better champions into Caitlyn, I believe. Having that mystic shot, able to kind of counter the range in a small way. Uh, especially since we see the uh, Babylon, or not Babylon, but uh, the Gittister with the Thresh. He'll be able to get away with the hooks, or get away from the hooks. Again, using the Arcane Shift, if he's not able to dodge. If he is able to buffer it properly, he can just get hooked and you know, Arcane Shift away anyway. 
OC Camille and Syndra for the final two pickups for the side of Killer Instinct. I do like the Camille pick. They have a lot of kill potential in all three lanes for Camille to make those early rotation and ganks. The side of Age Limit, kind of easy to catch out. The Ogre fan on the Scion's not going to be very mobile. Mid Chad is not extremely mobile either with the Cassiopeia. Obviously, Cassiopeia gets a little bit faster as she grows levels, but early on, you're fairly slow. The poison is there. Only the Miasma really does much until you get the Rylai's Crystal Scepter and or hit level 6 for the Stone Gaze. But we're going to see the Pike pick up for Grudon in the bot lane. So it looks like all the all the uh, players on the side of Age Limit picked the champions that they were going to play. They didn't do any picks for each other. That's kind of concerning to me that they're not able to pick each other's champions. Could be a, you know, a limited champion pool or... Maybe they're, oh, I, maybe they're a little bit newer to this type of thing, and they're just used to picking their own champions anyway. Since you know, when you solo queue, that's usually what you end up doing. But looking at these two, we have the loadout finishing in about ten seconds. I'll go over what I want to happen, what will probably happen, and we'll be able to see if any of these summoner spells do switch at the last second. Drudon right now has that teleport on the pike. I doubt that's going to stay. If it does, I will be extremely surprised. And it does. It does switch over to the Ignite. We see the double Ignite on the side of Killer Instinct. The barrier is going to be used by mid-Chad. Cassiopeia this time. So what kind of ridiculous thing do I want to see right now? If we could get a giant Scion alt started, all the champions of Killer Instinct running forward, getting hit by the five-man stone gaze, Scion comes in, Hits them all up. The true shot barrage from Nofu goes through. And then we see Grudon get a pentakill with one ult. Or just get a pentakill, I should say, with uh, ults. And the reset. That's the ridiculous thing that I'm hoping to happen. Will it happen? Probably not. Is it possible? Very light. Very much so. But looking at both of these teams' lineups, I do like the side of Killer Instinct a lot more. Uh, the Elise... Again, like I said, not the worst pick in the world. I just don't think it's as strong as the Camille. I think Obelisk will be able to abuse a dads at most points in this, at least early on. The gang of potential from Obelisk is much, uh, um, a lot easier to pull off. Uh, much more of a threat as well as Camille can come over walls and whatnot and does have, not necessarily a guaranteed stun, but I, a lot easier one to land. Uh, not the, I mean, Gay Dad's on the Elise, though, does have the Cocoon, so he can still come into lane, deal a lot of damage, and help get a kill, possibly. But again, I do like Obelisk. In the top lane, we should see Jensen win against Yogurt Fan. Uh, Urgot is just a much stronger champion early on. We have seen matches where Scion gets abused early on by an Urgot and then turns it around later down the road, and he does get a couple item under, uh, items under his belt. But that definitely comes down to how well these two can play the champion and how you know how much they know. In the mid lane, I do like Syndra over Cassiopeia. Uh, obviously, the Twin Fangs and the Poison Gas can do a lot of work and definitely lay down the the hurt. But with Bibelot taking the Ignite and Midshot taking the Exhaust, or excuse me, not Exhaust, the the Barrier, Bibelot should be able to have a, a little bit more kill pressure be able to, if he longs he can land the stun and he's probably going to see a lot of ganks from obelisk i can definitely imagine meanwhile on the bot lane i do like i do like the pike ezreal in a way I, I do believe that they don't really synergize the best but with the essence flux and uh, you know essence flux changes with stick shot and arcane shift those changes you know to that skill I, they definitely have a lot of kill potential down there it's kind of hook for hook, though. Whoever gets the hook might win it. Uh, the only problem I could see is if Grudon pulls Key back and then Key does land a hook on the Nofu as he walks up, then that definitely could really turn the tides much more so than they would like. So, again, I'm going to give it to Killer Instinct, at least for this first matchup, just based on draft. Um, I know some of you out there may agree or disagree with my decision. But going into this, we do have Killer Instinct on that blue side with Jensen on the Urgot in the top lane. Obelisk will be playing the Camille in the jungle. We'll see Babylon on that Syndra mid. And Cinderay and Kiedister 
on the Caitlyn Thresh in that bot side. Meanwhile, on the red side of the map, we do have Age Limit with Yogurt Fan on that Mecha Zero Scion in the top lane. Raised by Gay Dads is on the Galaxy Elise. We do see Mid Chat on the Cassiopeia in the mid lane, and No Food and Grudon on the Ezreal Pike in that bot side. And we're going to see Dark Harvest taken by Babylot. We see Cindre taking Grasp of the Undying on the Caitlyn. I've seen that a lot, honestly. I. I, I don't know how I personally feel about that. Uh. I've seen it do very well, though. I've seen it, you know, completely obliterate, you know, obliterate the enemy. I think I played a match where the enemy team took a Caitlyn mid with that, and they crushed our mid. I don't know how they did, but they crushed them. So we'll see how it fares here. Fares here. All right, here we go. Both teams are going to set up their five-point mark. Oh, they might have found Gay Dads. He's going to take a little bit of damage. Albus gets here. There's the easy stun. They're going to force the flash at least. And no, we're going to see an early first blood by Jensen. And just like that, the Camille is showing its worth. And Kiedister is going to get pulled back by Grudon. He might be in a little bit of trouble now. It's going to be trade for trade, kill for kill. He is running over. He did flash the wall, though. Nova's going to look to land those mystic shots. Good guy, nice heal, but we see the flash coming out. No, if we're looking for the mystic shots, is it going to be able to enough to kill him, though? We do see that Babylon is rotating downwards, and he's going to look for the hook. He does get it. There's Ignite going down, and Key's gonna actually going to go down and die as well. He's looking for it. Oh, he does. He almost gave the kill over to Nofu, though, but Grudon going to be able to pick it up. So it is a one-for-one. One. Lots of summoner spells used. Flat three flashes on the side of Age Limit, Nofu, Grudon, and Mid Chat. The Ignite is down as well. We do see on the side of... Killer Instinct, though, the heal and the, the flash is down only for them in comparison. Elsewise, or otherwise. So definitely a lot more kill pressure going to be in that bot side for the side of, uh, excuse me, Killer Instinct. Uh, definitely with both flashes being gone, we could definitely see Obelisk coming down there at some point. It does start the red buff, though. They know exactly where Sindora is. But... Jensen with the early kill, gives himself a Ruby Crystal. And Minchad just putting in the abuse with that poisonous gas. Babylon not really landing the abilities onto. Definitely looks like he's more CS focused. Is in the, you know the early lead as of now. Let's see how. How much that does change. We see Gay Dads in the bot side river while Obelisk is in the top side river looking for the hook. Almost gets gets the play back. He uses the ignite though, and Cinderella gets pulled closer, and the heal has to be dropped by Nofu, and that's not what you want to have happen. That's already all the summoner spells in the bot side gone. Flash is the only thing up for down there, and that's for Cinderella. There's a stun on the mid chat. He's out of mana though. Can Gay Dads make something happen? He's ignited up. He's gonna bury himself up. Babylon trying to get a kill. At least he's gonna get it. He's gonna flash out. He's okay. Obelisk is here though to kill Gay Dads. The red buff is ticking down. He's gonna go up in the air. Gotta be careful, Babylon, at the flash board. And then we also see Gay Dads die. What was Babylon thinking? Meanwhile, Yogurt Fan in a lot of trouble. Flash out. He does use the gets the grass of the dying proc though to keep his life up. Jensen's gonna chase him down. He flashed forward for him. Maybe he should have just held on. Babylon shouldn't have died there. He should have just kept running into the river instead of running back to lane like that. Definitely a huge mistake on his part. Could have got out of there completely clean. Nofu taking a lot of damage. He's getting thrown back. Oh no, Yorga fans are a lot of trouble. Obelisk is here just in case. But it's not needed. Nice little stun. Jensen gonna deny him his little bit of farm. We do see that Gay Dads is topside. He might be looking for this kill. He does get the cocoon down. Look at the damage coming out. There's nothing Jensen can do. He gets a barrier up, but the TP is coming in. Good dodge by Gay Dads to get out of the stun. And now we see mid lane mid chat is chasing out Babylon. He's gonna try to look for some damage, but that's about it. Jensen 
Getting killed when he probably shouldn't have. So we're definitely seeing a little bit of a kind of just misplays from the side of Killer Instinct. Just I guess like a, a misjudgment of sorts, if you will. Either misjudging damage, not realizing that a flash is available or something. Because I definitely think Jensen could have got out if he would have just flashed, or not flashed, but excuse me, if he would have dashed the opposite direction instead of into Gay Dads. It looked like he might have been trying to pull Gay Dads back so Obelisk could come in and help him get the kill. But there's def he was definitely just one auto away from death regardless. And even though that, even there, that's a little bit of gold, a, a little bit of shutdown gold that went over to Yogurt, or excuse me, Gay Dads. But by not doing the damage on the mid shed, gets those stuns down. He is a level lower though. Two plates down in that bot side already. I mean, that's just the abuse of a kid. Five minutes is up though, or five minutes in. We do see the Ocean Drake is alive and ready to be taken. Killer Instinct is in that lead with about a thousand gold right now. Yoga fan taking up tons of damage. Has to be careful. Once Jensen hits level six, he's definitely going to be looking for the kill. The next wave should be able to do it there. Maybe, yeah, it'll be the next wave. So once the next wave comes in, just gotta look for a little bit more damage. He can get himself an easy kill. We're on trying to get some kind of poke down. Not quite sure, but here we go. Obviously, then does get the flash. Oh, he does go in. Nice get. Nice pickup on the kill though. We're gonna see mid Chad goes down. He almost had his flash available, but good flash by Obelisk to land that stun properly. And again, this is exactly what I said you would see out of Obelisk on the Camille over Gay Dads on the Elise. You're gonna see much more ganks out of him, or, you know, out of Obelisk with the Camille pickup. It's just gonna be much more aggressive and a lot easier to have. But there's the Ignite going down. There's the Suppress, and he's gonna fear the world. 9,999 damage. Impossible to survive, I guess. I guess technically, if you. Could you infinitely scale Scion's HP past 9,999? Like, could it go to that 10,000 mark, or does it just have a hard cap? Huh. I never thought about that. So I guess maybe if you're able to scale his HP past that, he would be able to survive. Well, no, you'd have to go higher than 10,000. You'd have to be at... Because what is it? Is it... It's like 25% like or something? Here, let's look at this. Uh, yeah, so it's 25% health. So he would have to be... He would have to be at 40,000 life in order to survive that at 25% health. And that's exactly at 25% health. Uh, now, while that's probably impossible to do, I doubt that will ever happen in an actual game. If that did happen, though, he could actually be the sole survivor of that ability when it does go off. But we do see an early, early gold lead coming out. 2,000 gold in favor of Killer Instinct. They got four or six kills to four at the moment. And they're just going to look look to continue this abuse as well. What the heck? My camera didn't move. I didn't realize my camera stopped. Or it wasn't moving. We do see that Babylon did die. What the heck did I hit? What the heck's going on? There it goes. I feel like the camera should automatically go to back to directed mode if you don't touch it for a second. Oh, well. we do see a pause coming out. It seems like Jensen did DC. Is that who? Yeah, Jensen DC'd. It looks like it's just Discord issues. It's not uh, not DC in the game. Uh, again, I do apologize about the camera. I didn't realize it wasn't going to go back to director mode automatically. And it was weird too because, you know, I had Jensen highlighted, and even when he backed, it just stayed in the lane.
So Babylon did die in that mid lane. It looks like it was a solo kill. Uh, no, def no, it wasn't. So it looks like. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. Judging by this, though, I'm gonna imagine Grudon went to the mid lane uh, to gank Babylon. Was able to pick up the kill with mid Chad. So was two minutes into the pause. Let's, I'm gonna check on the Discord to see what's going on. So he's still not in the Discord even now. So while we wait, let's take a look at gold real quick. So on the top lane, it's a 1,200 gold lead for Jensen. That's where almost all their gold is right now. He is 3-1-0 against Yogurt Fan Scion. In the jungle, we do see that Gay Dads has about a, has a little, almost a 200 gold lead on the Elise. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, it is a 500 gold lead for Babylon. And then bot side, it's a 400 gold lead. <laughs> a 400 gold lead for Tindore. But on the other side, you do see the supports. Grudon has, you know, 400 more gold than Key. Uh, Key right now. Not really the tar uh, person you want the gold lead on. Uh, that much of a gold lead on right now. You definitely would like to have it on either no food. Or even mid Shad. Pike though, Pike does do damage depending on how Grudon decides to build this. He may just, he may just, I don't know, go for, go for pure damage. I do see a lot of tank pikes, and I, sometimes I feel like tank pike is a lot better. The whole point of pike is you go in and you try to do as much as possible. And then you wait for their health bars to get low enough to where you can just execute them. But Alba is going to go over as we get back in this game. There's the ult. Nice hook. He gets on a Grudon. The Hextech ultimatum comes out. And there's one dead. Grudon is ignited up. He's trying to dash out. He's just going to stay on our tower. Pulls in Key. But Key's just going to get... Or not take the tower aggro. And that's a double kill going over to Alba as soon as that game unpaused. And they're going to look to take this bot side tower. There's a throwback by Jensen. He's after Yogurt Fan right now. Look at the damage output. It has the fade, so he's going to have a little bit of speed boost. Yogurt Fan has no real defense to flash out of Yogurt Fan right now. And he's not able to pick up the kill. He's going to ult himself away. But here comes Gay Dads in here. Does land the cocoon. And he's going to look for the kill. Gets a little bit of electric cube damage down. He's going to get thrown over by Jensen. And look at the damage come out. He has to be careful. Jensen might be able to pick up this kill if he can land one of his little bolts. He's got a missile ready. He's going to look for it. Flash forward. We see the flash out of Gay Dads. There's a cocoon. Nice play. And he's able to pick up the kill. Meanwhile, we do see the Ocean Dragon was taken by Killer Instinct. He does come in forward. Does get the hook with the flash. There's the play backwards. We're going to see the Dark Harvest. That he, and he's going to be able to get the kill. But he does go down in the meantime by mid Shad. So one for one in that mid lane. Still better that it Babylon got himself a kill. And he's going to have a little bit of open time. Meanwhile. Oh, beautiful. Green was able to pull. Abba's back does misjudge the alt though, and that's gonna be shut down going over for Nofu. Abba's tried getting over the wall, but he was pulled back by Grudon. You definitely think he should have waited. Oh, here we go. Nice cocoon coming out by Gay Dads. They're gonna kill a Babylon, but he does flash. Oh my god, the alt came out and he was able to kill <laughs> Gay Dads before anything else happened. I didn't even see the alt, honestly. But Babylon was able to flash out of the stun from Grudon and able to get himself an easy kill. Now we're going to see a lane swap from the side of Killer Instinct. Going to throw Jensen in the bot lane, and why not? Does have to be a little careful, though. I think he can be killed by Grudon and Nofu. But they're definitely just going to send Cinderi up top with E to push this tower, rest of this tower. And they have four minutes left before the plates do fall off. And that's going to be a ton of gold going over the way of Cinderi. And you can see he's not even worried about the creeps. He's just worried about pushing this tower down. I kind of miss playing Caitlyn. I haven't played Caitlyn in a, such a long time. 
Rudon's top side, he might be looking for something. Would you see Obelisk, excuse me, in Babylon in that river? They're going to be looking for this Rift Herald right now. Eyes are on them by Gate Eyes, but a good QQ. And there's Mid Gate, Mid Chad in there as well. The heal does come out for Cinderate. And can Babylon survive? No, that's going to be shut down going over to Mid Chad. They do stop that Rift Herald there, though. Yogurt Fan is going to alt in. He's going to get something. He does get a knock up on the key, but is it enough? Key's pulled back. Can he survive for now? No. Raised by Gay Dad's going to be able to get the tilt, but he does drop the box, slowing everyone down. Rudon is ghosted up. And ready to go. Going to look for something, but he's going to try to go in. Obelisk is going to stun him up. Cinderay's okay. There's a challenge. My mid chat is here. Going to look for that stone gaze. This is going to be enough. Rudon in a little bit of trouble here, but he's not able to. He's not actually not going to go down. We see the TP does come in. From Jensen, gonna try to help out up here, and that's two kills going to the way of Age Limit. Yoga fan trying to get a knock up. Oh, Cinderay almost in a little bit of trouble. Gonna get knocked up. Cinderay has to get out of there. There's the rappel, and he's gonna go down. Now Jensen's in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna try to fight Gay Dad's key. Is here though, so be able to. Maybe able to get that kill, and he's just going to pick up one. Can he get the second battle out? Meanwhile, kills mid chat while we weren't looking. Gay Dads goes down, and now Yogurt Fan goes down. That's a double kill going over to Jensen, and this game is full of action. Two kills a minute. I love it. Babylon was able to pick up the solo kill in the mid lane while this little skirmish was going on in the top side. So it's going to be a three for one overall. And now they pick up that top side tower. All that's left is the mid tower, and they have two plates left on that. They are about to get the absolute most amount of gold as possible. And now Jensen has left. Apparently, his game is crashing now. So, a little bit of issues here. I do believe Jensen. I think. Is it Jensen? I know it's one of the top landers for the team. I, I, I feel like Jensen sounds right. I might be wrong. Uh, but I, I know one of the top landers, they have some computer issues. Um, whether it's crashing or you know, whatever. I feel like Jensen is the, the primary, or is, the, is the person. I know it's a top laner though, for sure, that has, uh, one of the teams has uh, computer issues. So they're definitely going to be in this pause for a second. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, hopefully we don't see. Hopefully we don't see another forfeit come out in this. All right, come out in this. Uh, Killer Instinct does have roughly five minutes of pause time left before they have to forfeit this match. And it's a good thing they have a. a uh, it's definitely a good thing to see a time limit on this. I played one time in this. Uh, it's called the Sugar Free League, and I was go I went in as a free agent, and I ended up playing as a support. And what ended up happening, and what ended up happening is we were playing against this team, and they got a top laner in, and then like ten minutes in the match, the game they pause, and we're like, "What's going on?" And they're like, "Oh, our top laner just left. He said he'll be right back." And we're like, okay. They're like, they said he went to the store. And we thought they were joking. You know, it was one of those things. Like, oh, he went to the store. Ha ha. You know, just being a smart ass. And <laughs> so we're sitting there waiting. We waited like five minutes. We're like, what's going on? And like, oh, he's still not here. And okay. Ten, we waited like 20 minutes. We, at, at like 15 minutes, we're like, we started contacting, you know, the the administration for the, the league. And we're like, hey, what's, what is going, what are we supposed to do? You know, it's a 20 minute pause or it's like 15 minutes pause. We don't know what's going on. Apparently what's just, and they, they had a forfeit. It was like a 20, 25 minute pause time. Like we just sat there waiting. It was horrific, but I misspoke. They have about 10 minutes left. I have 14 minutes right now before they have to forfeit the match. Hopefully Jensen does get his, get his computer situation figured out. I mean, he is 5-2-0 and zero right now. Definitely doing very, very well on the Urgot top side. 20, 25 CS above Yogurt Fan at the current moment. Let's see how some of this gold has swayed. Key has caught up in gold. He's only down by 200 now. The gold is pretty even. Meanwhile, in the bot lane carry is no food down by a little over 100. Hey, reconnected. 
Uh, mid side, though, we do see a 1,500 goal lead over for Babylon. Top side, we see a 2,200 goal lead for Jensen. And then in that jungle, you do still see that 800 goal lead for Gay Dads. So the gold pretty well, pretty much where you would expect it. Jensen having by far the greater of the gold lead in comparison to his opposing laner. Ready checks were there. Okay, here we go. So the game's unpausing. We got two seconds. We got one second. We have no more seconds. But Abbas misses the wall. He's going to chase him down. The Hextech ultimatum is ready, but we're going to see no food flash. Actually, TP is coming in. The uh, No, he does use the ult to get out of there, but he's going to be stunned up, and he might be in a lot of trouble. And Yogurt fan able to pick up the kill. Babylon is here, though. He gets the stun onto two, but is it enough? It is not. He doesn't have the ult available. It's kind of interesting that Obelisk continued to chase Nofu like that. Again, it's just these small missteps that I see Killer Instinct doing. There's the hook. Doesn't go... Or, yeah, Nofu doesn't go up into the hook. Rudon drops a pink ward there. I guess they're waiting. Maybe they'll push up. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. But that goalie is still at that 2,000 mark in favor of Killer Instinct. And this dragon is about to be up in about 24 seconds. It is going to be a win drake. But that Rift Herald, meanwhile, in the top side is being taken by Age Limit. Thirty seconds left on the plates. Oh no, Jensen has quit yet again. Are they going to continue to play this? It looks like they're just going to try to play this out without him. But do they know? That is the question. There we go. So, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you are part of the Revenants Discord, which I hope you all are, on Saturday, this coming Saturday, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, there is a 2v2 Battle of the Abyss tournament hosted by the Revenants community. It is $5 per duo to enter. And the winners will get $20, $20 worth of Riot points each uh, for the first place team. So definitely, definitely get into that and have a good time. Get your duo partner going. Should be fun. It's The rules are going to be first to two kills, first for tower, or first to 100 CS. So depending on your play style, you can going accordingly i'm doing it i got my friend joining me with it so should be fun time i believe it is going to be streamed and casted i i believe it will be uh i could get i'll have the final details or i could get the final details at some point or again if you do uh join the discord or on the discord you can see that it'll probably be streamed or not they, they do post what's going to be happening uh, most of the events we do see it be streamed by Ridiculous. He does stream most of the events that we do. So I imagine this one will also be streamed as well. But good double stun by Babylon. They might look to continue this fight. And there's the ult coming out. Mid chat's not going to be targeted. But Yogurt Fan is going to go down as well. There's a two shot barrage. And the dragon fight has begun. Yogurt Fan is rooted up, not able to have anything happen. Almost got the net on the Nofu. And it looks like we're going to see Age Limit have to back out already. And Jensen on his way. So they're just going to go for these, this mid turret. They're going to have all three of the first tier turrets down. That Rift Herald a quarter of the way quarter of the way out of time. Right now still has about 70% 70, 70 left on the time limit. And we're going to see the dragon be picked up by Killer Instinct. The pings did come out, but it's going to be a little too late. They're going to be able to get this, though. So that Wind Drake will go over, and it's going to be an Inferno Drake next. 
on the menu. We'll have to definitely see who tries to prioritize that one. You know, I might have to give this Grass of the Undying Caitlyn a try. It seems to be pretty okay. I mean, I'm not much of a Caitlyn player anymore. I did go through a little bit of a phase where I tried playing her a lot, and I thought she was fun. Um, but, I don't know. I'm in a weird spot in the game where I don't really want to play traditional balling carries. But meanwhile, the mid lane, we're going to see Obelisk force the flash out of mid chat. And they're still going to try to chase him down. He does use a Hectic all man, but here we go. He's cocooned up. And he's going to go down to Stone Gaze was used in. Again, he just went I don't, He just went way too aggressive there. He forced the flash and should have just backed up. He didn't really have anyone else there. For, flash forward, though, for Babylon. He's going to get a nice quick kill. The Ignite is down. We did see the sniper call come in, but they're gonna it was gonna be stopped. So one for one kill already. Jensen is or was in that backside or, or topside jungle looking for something. Not able to get anything. Ooh, Chad almost being stunned up. The hook going a little short as well. And they're just trying to push as much as possible. But Obelisk, again, he just went too forward, too just a little too much. Nice clear of the wave. They're looking for a hook on somebody, it's gonna miss both. Both of these supports missing hooks. It looks like they're going to continue to push Babylon moving to that bot side. We can see that Obelisk is going to be farming up his jungle right now. They kind of have room to do so. They're putting a they're putting a lot of pressure on the enemy team. Of age limits, they're not really able to just go out and just farm the jungle and do whatever. The push potential from this team is extremely good. Oh, Babylon is going to try to look for a solo kill onto Gay Daz, but he's going to walk right over a ward when that happens. He doesn't matter. He's still going in. We do see that rotation from Grudon going down there. Oh, he does come back. He's looking for the hook. He's going to land it onto Obelisk. That's not the target he wanted, but it does stop Obelisk from doing anything. We see the all coming out from Yoga Fan. There's a two shot barrage. He's going to miss everybody. The box is down. Yoga Fan's going to die. Can Jensen get in there? He does get the fear on the one, but the hook does get on to Nofu. Nofu might be in a lot of trouble. Challenge Smite does come down. Yoga Fan's chasing down. We see the ultimate come out. Chum the Waters did not land onto anybody. Oh, wait, it did. It killed the key, but Nofu's in a lot of trouble. He's going to flash out and drops his own heal. Mid chat's now going to chase down Babylon. But the ult comes out. Babylon able to give himself a kill. There we go. Grunon's going to look for more. He misses the hook, but can he get any more? He got the ignite down. Triple kill coming out for Babylon with a snipe. Now Grudon looks to be the next target. Can he get in there? He's got oh my god, Babylon is going to get a quadra kill. One more and he would have himself a penta, but Yorger fan is nowhere to be found. What a fight from Babylon. Able to get a quadra. Basically, I would say almost solo right there. You saw a little bit of low health bars coming out from the rest of the team fight, but they backed and Babylon was still there. Good dodge of the hook, was ignited up by Grudon, still kept fighting, went into his creep wave, able to just survive, threw down the damage, got the Dark Harvest resets, and he's sitting at 14 stacks at 18 minutes. He is a monster right now on the Syndra. And with that Dark Harvest reset like that, it, kill after kill after kill, this is some easy farming right there. Right, he's gonna run into the yoga fan. He's chasing him down, kinda. I see you. you know, I've never really liked any. Uh, that that Caitlyn skin's probably my favorite one. I never really liked any of the ones because they always had the weird looking hat or weird looking hats. Definitely wasn't a fan of it. The one I have the one where she wears the bandana, the Resistance Caitlyn, just because has the less weird looking hat. I don't know why that was always like bothered me. But the hat was just too much. But I bought that back in the day when I had the money to buy skins. But here we go. Jensen going to throw Yogurt Fan back. He's going to try to do as much damage as possible. Yogurt Fan not able to do anything back to him. He gets to slow down. He's looking for one more little toss back. There's the right score being popped. But we're going to see the ult and he's not able to stop it. But he does force out a pretty big ultimate out of Yogurt Fan. Dragon will be up in 14 seconds. Again, it's an Inferno Drake, so we definitely see both teams looking to get it right now. Obelisk going to go in. He has the Hextag all man. Dobson on Yofu. 
Cinderella uses the, the net to get closer back. Might have been a mistake, but it's not. Cinderella is going to go in. Obelisk is dodging the Grudon Chum the Waters. You see Yogurt Fan with the TP in the backside, but Babylon does get the solo kill onto mid Chad. And now we see Gay Dad is going to go down. The TP does come in from Jensen as well. And that's going to be four for zero. Killer Instinct just taking this game by storm now. 7,000 gold lead. And now they're going to sell an Inferno Drake. Cinderella almost got himself killed. He used the net to push himself into the fight, which almost got himself stunned up, but it was beautiful. Nonetheless, he did get himself a double kill. Now they're going to look towards that Baron. Gay Dads is up in two seconds. I don't know if they'll be able to get there in time, though. We'll have to see. Obelisk is pretty low. Yoga fan's gonna go in, drops the ward down, he knows where they're at, and they're gonna disengage a little bit of it, and that's gonna buy a lot of time for the rest of the team to get there. There's the right to glory used by Yoga fan, it just pops on key though, and they're gonna go in. Nofu does come over the wall with the arcane ship, they're gonna fight this out. Yoga fan's gonna be the first one to die. Grudon's next, we see the true chop barrage, but does absolutely nothing right now. Yoga fan popping people away, Jensen's super low. Mitchak gonna flash forward with the two man stone gaze, this is enough. He's stunned up and he's locked down, he's gonna die. We see the repel coming out. Oh my god, beautiful by Babylon. And Cinderella gets the kill on there. We see the all coming out. Oh, no, Nofu gets shut down. He's looking for Jitsu now, but Nofu's going to try to fight this out. Obelisk is here. Gets the sun down. Can Babylon get another? Yes. That's going to be an ace going over to Killer Instinct yet again. Oh, my God. The repel. And then the drop. And Babylon with the beautiful, beautiful stun. Able to knock them back. And Killer Instinct. If it wasn't for those little bit of plays, just that... just key moments they would have lost that that fight at baron but they came out on top for sure a beautiful stone gaze by mid chat able to stun two two prime targets as well but they just weren't able to capitalize and follow up yogurt fan just died way too quickly as well as grudon if grudon would have stayed alive he would have executed everybody in that fight i imagine so it's definitely curious to see that since the since age limit is down in gold you know they're they don't know how much gold they're down but they know they're down by at least, I would say they're probably guessing about four to 5,000 at, you know, at least at the minimum range. We can see here they're down by almost 9,000. You definitely would think that Grudon would be going more tanky. Again, you go in, you can't do anything if you're dead. And Grudon kind of has to stay alive, but Yogurt Fan gonna ult from super far away. Mitch, I might not even be able to get away. He's gonna go down instantly. But Stone Gage did come out, only hits Jensen. He gets pulled back and he's knocked up. Alva's gonna go over. There's the Hextech all the man on the Yogurt fan. We see Kita does almost land a hook on Nofu. True Shot Barrage comes out, does do quite a bit of damage. That's a double kill coming out from Babylon. There's Yogurt fan getting beat down by, or Yogurt fan beating down Jensen with the passive, but he's going to use the right score to get away a little bit. Babylon coming to rescue, though. The Cocoon lands. Is it enough? He's going to pull back in. Yes! We're going to see Grudon with the kill. Nofu almost getting a kill on the Obelisk, though. Cinderay is going to go in. He does pick it up. Storm Razor proc, and that's going to be another three for one. And age limit just, or excuse me, kill NC taking this fight. Grudon just gonna come over. He gets the stun down, does get the ultimate. And that's gonna be a nice kill. He tries to go and visit. This is enough. He gets the second ult, and it's not gonna be enough. Cinderay gets to go. Oh, Baron almost actually picks up Cinderay. And so that's gonna be a four for two in favor of Killer Instinct. And these fights just keep on going. 33 to 18. We have 51 kills at 23 and a half minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely one exciting match. So we see that Nofu is building the Blade of the Rune King over the second tier, which I'm definitely a fan of. I don't really find that second tier super strong, um, especially now that the game is much, much faster paced. Obviously, you see like a lot more of these skirmishes are coming out, so you definitely need more of that, uh, more of the damage now over the damage later, uh, especially when you get past that 15 minute mark. So about 15 to 20, eh, 30 minutes. But Grudon might be the target. He actually gets the stun off. He did. He pulled Obelisk, which stopped his own stun. So he wasn't able to land it. Probably would have used the Hextech Ultimatum if it did stun him, though. And they're looking for this Baron. Jensen's in that backside. There's the ult coming out. He's going to land on a mid chat. And Jensen's in that backside. But Obelisk coming over the wall. He's looking for it. Oh, my God. Legendary for Babylon. 
Mitch Chad does go down. Meanwhile, we do see that your fans in the backside. Gay Dad's getting shredded right now. Now Grudon's the target by Obelisk. He's getting beat down. That's a double kill coming for Babylon. Yoga fans are going to go down next. Who's going to pick up the kill, though? And it's going to be Jensen. He does get it, and there's only one more left, and that is Nofu. Are they going to be able to pick him up? No. Yoga fans are going to go down, though, and Nofu super close to dying, actually. And now they're looking for this Baron, and that's a four for nothing. Killer Instinct. 10,000 gold lead at this moment. And it seems like nothing that Age Limit do and nothing that Age Limit can do right now is working for them. Uh, they trying to get these picks, they're trying to make these fights happen, but with as strong as Babylon is, there's just there's no way you can even fight, especially if he even lands a you know one man stun. He could kill off mid chat instantly. He could kill off gay dads instantly. You know. Grudon, Nofu, any of those people will do nothing to him. And right now, he's sitting at 24 Dark Harvest stacks. He is almost at a Dark Harvest stack a minute. That That's that's absurd sounding right now. So, you know, his Dark Harvest alone with just the stacks is doing 120 damage. Oh no, Yogurt Fan is there. Obviously, he's going to find him. Babylon might try to make a play happen. There's the sun up. He has no MR except for that Negatron. Oh my god, does it matter? Grudon does get the pull on Cinderay, though. This might be the fight they need. Nofu's trying to go back in. He does get the Essence Flux. Beautiful kill, but we see that uh, Nofu dies to the Keyster. And meanwhile, we see that mid chat is going to fall as well. Babylon getting the kill there. Looks like Grudon's going to try to run away. Gay, gay Dads. Goes up. Jensen gonna look for it. Does time it a little off though. Gay Dad's flash is nice. He does flash it all getting away from Jensen for the moment, but can he survive? The Baron Min is doing a lot of damage. Flash forward. Oh, he might actually get killed. Yes! Gay Dad's able to get the solo kill and huge outplay on Jensen. There's nothing you can do right now though. Anywhere Babylon is, it's a kill. We're not going to try to clear out these minion obelisks because here, Babylon rotating up. They just got to look for a kill. He doesn't care though. He just wants that tower and he's going to go over the wall. Babylon's going to be waiting. He gets a stun down and Yogurt, Yogurt, I was going to say Yogurt God, but Yogurt fan. Second Ocean Drake about to fall to the likings of Killer Instinct. The next Baron should be up. And uh, it should be up in time for them to really put in a big push. They definitely can look to take that outer tower now. There's only a few Baron buffs left on the team. You know, that's about 25% left of the time. They're looking to try to push this in hip though. Obelisk is not here, so they definitely have are missing a, a good engage tool, but when you have Babylon, you don't really need it right now. Look at the damage he does. Key does find a uh, hook on a mid-chat. Mid-chat's going to go down. Instantly just ulted up. Legendary. We see a true shot barrage come out. Cinderay is actually really low. Babylon might go down. Looks like, oh my god, the damage comes out. There's that Dark Harvest pop. And can he get a kill? No. Yogurt fan's going to die as well. He's going to pop the pass, though. He's going to be able to get Cinderay. No. He's going to die, but we see Nofu does try to get out of there. He falls. Oh, Grudon looks for the kill. It doesn't get anything, and that's a clean ace coming out for Killer Instinct, and that's gonna be game. What a what a hell of a fight that was. It, look at the low health bars too. I, and again, they tried everything they could to get a kill, and it just doesn't seem like anything was working for them at this point. I mean, they were, it's 15,000 